welcome back. So today's video, we're gonna get pretty deep. We're talking about therapy. I can honestly say that therapy has radically changed my life for the better. And I wanted to share with you guys all the things that I learned throughout my sessions. But before we get into that, I wanna thank today's sponsor, BetterHelp. This couldn't have been a better partnership because I wholeheartedly believe that therapy can benefit anyone. So many of us suffer from things that interfere with our happiness, whether it's uh, negative coping mechanisms that you picked up along the way in your past. Uh, but all of this can lead to mental roadblocks from our goals, but I do believe that therapy can help you get closer to who you're meant to be. BetterHelp assesses your needs and matches you with your very own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating with them within 48 hours. They have over 15,000 counselors in their network and they've got a broad range of what they specialize in, so you'll definitely find one that's the right fit for you. They also make it really easy and free to change up counselors if needed. Right now, you can get 10% off your first month using my link, betterhelp.com slash Jen. That's better, H-E-L-P. You can join over 1 million people who are taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. I will leave that link in the description box, so please pop that open. So therapy was something that I knew I wanted to address at some point in my life because I've always had a hard time regulating my emotions and how I handle stress. But I was looking at it through a lens of like, ah, okay, I should probably do this, but I'm just gonna put it off. So I pushed it off all the way up until the beginning of 2017. So I was 26 at the time and I had just gotten engaged to Ben. Getting engaged was really serious for me because I was like, okay, I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with this person. I should probably get my shit together and figure myself out. So fast forward to now, I've officially been going to therapy for four years, which is nuts to say out loud. Uh, but basically I went through three different therapists before finding the right one for me. I actually did a whole video explaining this process, which I'll leave up in the cards. But regardless, throughout my journey of finding the right therapist, each session that I did, I found extremely beneficial, so don't get discouraged. So the main thing that happened was I was able to get to know myself at a deeper level, like a level that I didn't even know was possible. I've always been pretty introspective and I've always wondered why I am the way I am, but therapy really accelerated this process because this was a space for me to really explore and examine what's going on in here. So I see life kind of like your own tailored adventure and you're gonna have an easier and smoother time navigating through it all when you know yourself better. And uh, one exercise that my therapist had me do was to take the Enneagram test and I know personality tests can feel quite gimmicky. There's so many out there, but I swear to God, the Enneagram test is the one that I resonated the most with. So I took the test and I ended up getting a type three, which is the achiever. So type threes are extremely ambitious, competent. They've got a jam packed schedule. They're always chasing the next achievement. We are also very concerned about what people think of us and we can suffer from workaholism, uh, being competitive, uh, basically putting all of our self-worth into the tasks that we do. It really helped me understand the way my mind works. Now, obviously this is not supposed to be the manuscript of your life. Not everything is like set in stone because of this test. This is just supposed to be like a good starting point for you to reflect on who you think you are and how you analyze and process the events that are happening to you. So the second thing that happened was I was able to unearth all these key moments of my childhood and see how they affected me. So basically throughout my sessions, I was able to kind of quilt this timeline of all these events that shaped me to be the person that I am today. So for some context, there are four of us in my immediate family. It's me, my mom, dad, and my older brother. And my parents were literally always working. So since elementary school, my brother and I were always home alone all the way up until 6 p.m. And uh, there were definitely pros and cons to this. Obviously, it was awesome that James and I just got to do whatever we wanted to do at home. It was mostly just like vegging out and watching TV. But as I got older, it would just be surfing the web. Uh, I would go on MySpace. I would drive out to LA with my friends, take pictures, and then put them on MySpace. It was really cool that my parents didn't have the chance to be helicopter parents and like breathe down our back. We really had the space to figure out who we were and what excited us. But on the flip side, I feel like a big con was that my parents weren't really available for us. I never got picked up from school. 
Uh, my parents never came to any function that I was participating in. I was never the best student either, from middle school all the way up to high school. My grades were just painfully average. Straight Bs, a couple of Cs, I even got a W once. I just felt like I was constantly disappointing them and so I had a lot to prove and so I feel like a lot of what drives my success is to show them that I'm not a fuck up and that I'm not a disappointment. And it's crazy, like that happened to me such a long time ago, but I still have to catch myself being like, you know what, it's okay. You are worthy just the way you are. Through therapy, I was also able to identify the characteristics that I learned from my mom and my dad. Uh, I'm gonna start off with the bad traits first, so then we can end it on a positive note. I got a lot of my fear and my sadness from my mom. Growing up, she never wanted to do anything new. She hated driving on the freeway. She was afraid of even speaking in English. She suffered a lot of trauma from when she was physically assaulted when someone robbed her store. And she dealt with so much of her sadness just by sleeping. And I remember when I was a kid for Mother's Day, I actually got her a pillow because she had spent so much of her time sleeping. It wasn't until I was maybe 22 or 23 that me and my mom had a talk about her depression. I think for a long time, not even she knew that she suffered from it because mental health is not really spoken about in the Korean community, especially at that time. With my dad, I definitely got his temper. He was a huge hothead growing up. And uh, yeah, we would always be fighting, screaming, throwing shit at each other. Even in my childhood door, there were just fist marks from when my dad was trying to like barge in when I locked the door. I mean, granted, I was kind of a nightmare as a teen, but it was just the only way we knew how to communicate with each other. It was just anger upon anger and we never saw eye to eye on anything. So now I wanna talk about the positive traits. From my mom, I definitely get her consistency and her diligence. Like she has this incredible talent of working extremely fast, efficiently. She can just duck down and focus and get everything done. It's so admirable. I also love her consistency. Like she was always home at 6 p.m. on the dot and she would just make dinner for us. And having that daily structure in our family helped out so much. From my dad, I definitely got his boldness and his creativity. He loved music. He was always playing his guitar, singing. He was also the life of the party, constantly socializing. There were so many parties at our house where people would just be like karaoke and drinking soju. Uh, so yeah, that was another characteristic that I picked up from him. He also always had a camera in his hand. He was recording us, taking pictures. And I feel like I definitely learned my love of documenting from him. Connecting the dots of my childhood and seeing how that affected me, along with understanding what characteristics I got from my parents, has given me a deeper sense of peace. Because now I'm never wondering like, where is this behavior coming from? Why am I like this? Like now when something happens, it's easier for me to just kind of detach from it, being like, oh, you picked up this negative coping mechanism when you were a child. How about we try a more productive route? It's also helped me heal the relationship with my parents because now instead of seeing them as this like perfect parental figure that let me down, I just see them as humans who tried their best and I love them for that. So now that I was able to make sense of my past, I became more aware of the emotional addictions that I was holding on to. So growing up, I was pretty emotionally volatile, like there was no middle ground. I was either euphoric or I was down in the dumps or I was throwing shit. Like I didn't know this at the time, but I was addicted to intensity and emotion. In fact, if things were just neutral and balanced, my brain would be like, this isn't right, we gotta start some shit. I think I just loved to feel something, whether it was good or bad. My brain just craved that drama because that's what was familiar to it. So one of the emotions that I was unconsciously addicted to was stress. This was at its worst at 2017 to 2018. And I would say like, this was when I was technically the most successful on paper. Like I had launched a clothing line. I was constantly traveling. The numbers were ticking up. I was like very booked and busy. And at a glance, it just looked like I was killing it, but I had never been more miserable in my life. I saw stress as a badge of honor. Stress is extremely dignified in our culture. Like if you're stressed, that means you're working hard. It means you're self-sacrificing. Stress became a metric of how productive I was doing. I was getting all of my self-worth from ticking off the to-do list, from networking, going to meetings, of uploading a video, publishing a collection, but I was not happy at all. I was just addicted to that feeling of like, see, I'm busy and I'm stressed. Am I worthy now? 
I think Yerkes Dodson Law describes this best. It explains that stress and anxiety are on a bell-shaped curve. There's a certain amount of stress that is beneficial because that's what gives you the momentum to do the tasks that you need to do. So at the beginning of the curve, it's pretty low. And then at the middle, that's just like the perfect amount of stress to get your performance up. And then anything past that, that's just the point of diminishing returns. Anything past that point, you're just paralyzed, it's unproductive. And at the time, I was just always at that red line because that's where I felt like I had to be. As a type three on the Enneagram, I tend to overfunction when I'm stressed or anxious. Uh, I guess it's good sometimes because it makes me extremely action oriented in a crisis. But even after the fire's put out, when I'm in this mode, I won't stop. I will start nitpicking everything in my life and I'll feel like the walls are just crumbling down on me. So yes, it's been a balance that I've had to figure out. <laughs> The last point I wanna make is that I learned what my three non-negotiables are for having a good day. Now, these are things that make me happy and feel good and content. Uh, usually, if I've done these three things, I usually have a good day and I'm in a good mood. So the first non-negotiable is if I've worked out. Now, this doesn't need to be like a one hour lifting session or like a crazy hit workout. Like these days, I just do a simple 20 minute workout. Sometimes I'll go on a walk. Like if I've just moved my body or I've done some type of magic manual labor, I can check that off. So my second non-negotiable is if I've meditated that day. I would say that this habit took me maybe like a year to develop and it's very, very subtle, but it will change your life radically. So I started off with just every day doing 10 minute guided meditations. I found that really simple and easy to do. And then now I've graduated to 20 minute sessions where I'm just listening to like ambient spa music. When I meditate, I almost envision myself kind of shedding. Like I'm shedding my emotional thoughts, I'm shedding just unnecessary bullshit. Um, it's time for me to just focus on my breath. Then lastly, we have future self journaling. Every morning, I will answer these seven questions over here. Um, I actually got this concept from Dr. Nicole LaPera, but I tweaked some of the questions in the format just to serve my needs better. But regardless, this really helps me reframe the negative thought patterns in my mind and replaces it with positive ones. Usually if I've had a wobbly day, that means like something really crazy happened or I didn't do my three non-negotiable. All right, folks, that is a wrap for this video. I have honestly learned so much through my experience with therapy. In fact, if you would like a part two, please let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you are currently in therapy or have gone in the past, I would love if you shared with me what you learned. I really, really do love interacting with you guys in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.